record. Well, let me say a, a warm welcome to everyone, where, whatever time zone you're calling from. My name is Simon Xiao, and together with Melissa and the GDS team, we are delighted to welcome you to our very first GDS Learning Lounge. Well, I must confess, I did not think of the phrase Learning Lounge by myself. I had uh, chat GPT to thank. <laughs> so because I was like, this is a lunch and learn kind of opportunity, but there is no lunch and there is learning and it may be breakfast for you. It may be supper for you. And I just put in chat GPT. Can you give me an idea of what I could call it? And then it spit out some ideas. And then I'm like, uh, it is a virtual thing, you know? And then I said further, it is a global thing. And then it became a bit too formal. Then I said, can you make it a little bit, you know, more informal? And then pop out came Learning Lounge, which I really like. And I hope you will too, because it's like a lounge. You can bring your, grab your drink, your coffee on your own. We can't supply that for you. But uh, all across the globe, wherever you're calling from, you're part of the GDS network. And as I've said in, that little introduction when I send this out. And by the way, I apologize. I know some of you received two, three invitations. <laughs> I didn't know how to work this events thing on workplace. I, so I was failing forward and then it became several emails for some folks. Uh, I apologize for that, but I think it had the effect of uh, urging some of you to say, hey, I, maybe I should join this. And so here we are. And together with me is uh, Ace. Hendon, some of you know him, wonderful gentleman. I've had the privilege to meet with him a uh, long time ago. I don't know how many years ago when we I flew into Manila and those were still pretty early on. And as they were figuring out what does digital strategies look like in their context. Um, and over the years, God has used him and the team there to come up with many fresh ideas. And today, uh, we get a chance to, to dig in a little bit into this digital missions launch pad, right? So you probably saw already in our um, little flyer thing, that's how we're going to unpack it. We're going to kind of pick under the hood, right? As it were, uh, what are the opportunities for you? And I, I'm, I'm assuming that's picking your interest and we'll have a bit of time to interact uh, with Ace, right? So before he comes on, I just want to remind us the reason why we're doing this is because we are a global network. Uh, we need each other, right? Uh, in, seated in this room or you guys calling in from different places, all have something to contribute. Uh, and I'm just delighted that uh, on our GDS workplace, uh, God has led many of you to contribute ideas, share stuff that's happening in your little corner of the world, and then different ones kind of queuing up and or not queuing up, but commenting and, you know, sharing other suggestions. Uh, and actually this, this particular um, webinar came out of that because I, I just asked, you know, would some of you be interested to learn? And we said, you know, I, why won't we do that? Right. It's a great op learning opportunity for all of us. Uh, we all want to be lifelong learners after all. Right. So anyways, Enough about me. I want to introduce to you Ace, Ace Pendon. He is a, a, a digital strategist and part of the team in Crew Philippines, uh, digital strategies. I'll let him unpack more about who he is, but I think you'll find that he is a, a fine gentleman that is just passionate about the work. And I am just excited to, that we get a chance to, to hear from him. So maybe I just say a quick prayer for us and then uh, we'll jump right in. All right. Dear Jesus, thank you from wherever we are. We are, we belong to you. And we're so grateful uh, that we get to learn as a community, a global community. And I thank you for Ace. I pray you bless him as he just shares a snapshot of what you're doing in and through his life and his ministry uh, in the Philippines. And may we glean something, may something that has been shared spark new ideas. May 
in some new uh, collaborations, maybe even amongst us, uh, be fostered, Lord, and facilitated. So would you lead us, Lord, in this time? In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So over to you, Ace. I think the format is he's going to have about 10 minutes or 10, 15 minutes to just share a little bit about Digital Missions Launchpad. And then we would just do some Q&A. You will notice in this is a Zoom call. So I'm requesting you make sure you mute yourself. But there is a Q&A uh, uh, tab that you can use if you'd like to use that. Or you can also type your question inside the Zoom chat. Uh, Melissa and I will try our best to facilitate that. And then we'll do a little bit of dialogue with Ace and we'll hear some stories, etc. All right. Ace, over to you. Okay, thank you, Simon, and good evening from the Philippines. It's nine o'clock here, so hopefully I still have some energy left. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let me share with you uh, Digital Missions Launchpad. The slides here are just for uh, for some context so that you'll be able to see, but most of this will come from my story. Okay, now that everything is set up. Okay, so I'm Ace. I serve in the Philippines, crew in the Philippines for 15 years now. So this has been a fun ride with digital strategies. So let me start by introducing Digital Missions Launchpad, our strategy for training digital missionaries, not just in crew, but in the body of Christ in the Philippines. So in November 2021, the International Graduate School of Leadership, a seminary in the Philippines, asked our team to create a learning module for their Foundations for Christian Leadership course. So we gathered trusted partners from different mission groups, which we actively work together like a, a, past, a Filipino pastor who's serving in the U.S., a digital specialist who creates videos uh, for Southeast Asia, and a podcast creator and a digital creator who creates tutorials for ministry to help craft the lessons for this course in this seminary. So when we run this course, we realize that many Christian leaders lack proper understanding of the digital strategies available in their country or even in their context. So we desire to help them effectively use these tools for fruitful ministry. In February 2022, when crew in the Philippines uh, called to mobilize people to participate in our annual summer mission trips, we saw another, our team saw another opportunity to share our knowledge and experience. We, all, we already partnered with local churches in training for evangelism and discipleship, but our team wanted to provide relevant training and resources so that digital strategies could be incorporated in the mission trips. We began to review the work that we did for the seminary, so here's a sample of our planning sheet for the seminary course. And then we incorporated it with the things that we are already doing, with the things that we want to do in the Philippines as a team, in helping Christians doing digital missions. Also, a few of our team members participated in other online learning classes that focus on digital strategies, innovation, which also provided further inspiration. So we quickly implemented uh, best practices by having short lessons, a definite time frame, and having weekly online meetings. By the end of February 2022, we started to launch Digital Missions Launchpad. For our first run, 32 participants signed up, including a few students from other countries. So we included uh, the following topics in the training. Digital theology, 
What does the Bible say about the use of technology for ministry and new ways of applying biblical truths in the digital age? The second topic that we put there is digital missions. How uh, defining missional gaps, ways how to do online evangelism, stories and case studies of teams around the world who have done digital missions. And third, known and moving. How to know your target audience, what next steps to offer in relation to spiritual growth and in the context of discipleship. Our first batch of participants gave us a better understanding of the needs and pain points of our students. The weekly video calls encouraged them to get to know each other and provided a place for them to ask questions about the topics. And at the end of our first run in March 2022, um, we now know how to better help the body of Christ. We also recognize that crew in the Philippines is one of the few Christian groups equipping Christians to maximize uh, digital tools and strategies. Many church and mission leaders in the Philippines remain unaware of the countless opportunities that digital provides for their local ministry. One pastor who completed the digital missions launch pad during our first run started exploring the use of Facebook Reels right away. He wanted to use it to bring the message of Jesus to an entirely new audience aside from the social media platform they were currently using in their church. For the second run of Digital Missions Launchpad in September 2022, we just prayed for 30 people to sign up. But God has other plans. Instead, he brought 60 people uh, from 17 locations in the Philippines and nine other countries. We also added some case studies and activities in our students' learning journey. So if you can see in the slide, we have there some updates. You, if you want, if you're not able to read it, it's okay. Uh, we just made sure that we revised uh, some items for the second run. So at the same time, people who had finished the training started asking for more. And they are asking if we're going to do another run in 2023. So we did our third run in, 20, in March this year, 2023, with almost about 150 plus students. And I think Frank is here. Frank is one of our students who enrolled in the, in the third run. So our experience from these uh, uh, opened the door for our team to partner to expand Digital Missions Launchpad. With our existing topics, these became uh, the course foundation for new topics that we offered in, in March. So we offered additional four courses in partnership with some other Christian orgs and ministries, which included podcasting, graphic design, social media, and um, navigating leadership in, in the digital age. Some of our students, especially in the third run, initially shared that they were very skeptical about digital missions. However, in the course of our training, they saw how valuable these strategies are and the tools are very useful for ministry. And then they repented and said sorry during one of our classes. Now, church leaders that uh, have gone through uh, Digital Missions Launchpad embrace the new paradigms of leading well in the digital mission field. One leader said that um, he doesn't know how to approach young people in their church who are offering digital tools. And one of our lessons helped understand them, and now he's better equipped to provide leadership for these young digital natives who are wanting to use their skills and talents in the digital space and technology for God's work. Some previous training participants 
have also become our co-workers for Digital Missions Launchpad, dedicating time to facilitate some of our courses and discussions assisting others in applying and imparting uh, the lessons they have learned, even outside Digital Missions Launchpad. One who finished Digital Missions Launchpad from another Christian org uses our training to train their digital missionaries in their own uh, missions organization. So we continue to work and refine our current course offerings and plan to release a few more courses. We are also exploring the possibility of creating uh, next level training uh, through our advanced courses. Uh, and it's our desire and prayer that our initiatives uh, help bless the body of Christ at the same time help fill missional gaps. So hopefully that paints a picture of Digital Missions Launchpad, what we're doing in the Philippines. And we can now use our time to mm. uh, ask some of the questions that you have or clarify some things. It's wonderful. Yeah, before we get into the questions, I uh, want to once again welcome all of you to our first uh, GDS uh, Learning Lounge. I'm glad you're here to challenge one another, to learn from one another. So uh, thank you for being part of this. Um, I, as mentioned before, I will make this recording available in case you missed uh, the first part. But thanks, Ace, so much for just giving us the broad overview. Um, just praising God with you that, you know, he has used this platform to equip um, so many people. Uh, perhaps well, just to dig in a little bit, we'll, we'll get to some questions that you guys are typing in the Q&A or in the comments. But I want to hear from you, like for you, what was the most... Uh, what brought you the most joy as you were engaging in this digital missions launchpad? I understand you're sort of like the principal or the main project coordinator for this. Yeah. Tell us what what made you uh, brought you the most joy. Um, I mentioned it in the in the story that uh, seeing them realize the potential of digital strategies and um, changing their mindset. Uh, the acknowledgement in public is just a, a bonus. <laughs> okay. So uh, some they... some students really say that, oh, I first thought that uh, this is not for me or for our church, but then I realized we can do this. We can reach more. We can mm -hmm. bring in uh, more people to the kingdom of God if we start using this. I see. Yeah. So is it the change in the mindset that makes you really excited? Yes. Yes. Or the repenting, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> Uh, the change in mindset. Uh, the change I think in that's mind. already a big, a big thing. But then you realize that also with the change in mind also propelled them to do something yes. about it, right? Yes, yes. Um, the the least that we see, least but not, but also important is they continue to ask questions. Can we do this? How about if we do this? This is only what we have. What what else can we do? So. It helps them to start to think and start to take uh, faith actions uh, on what they have. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah, and you talked a little bit in your, you know, this idea of iteration, right? You yeah. are making progressive in, you know, t t tell us a little bit more about how uh, how deliberate you are and where are this, the areas that you are getting the inputs to make those changes yeah in the, in the context of making changes we there's a section in the in the digital missions launchpad at the end that they can type their feedback even before even before they also give feedback through our mentors our facilitator. So we put them in consideration. We also observe like how many are dropping off or how many do not finish. Um, which parts are are they stuck? Maybe we, we might look into shortening some of the case studies or removing some of the case studies or making some of them optional. So those are the things that uh, we look into. Uh, it's good that our platform also provides uh, some insights to help us make uh, decisions for ch uh, changes. Yeah, that's good. 
Yeah, and maybe tell us tell us a little bit more about the platform. I think there are some questions coming yes, in yes. about what do you use yes. and how do you interact with your students or your participants. Yeah. Yes. Um, for our platform, um, <laughs> to, to to basically digital missions launch, but it's a it's like a built by the community. So I mentioned that uh, when we started, the lessons come from our partners as well. So the platform comes from a partner in a. Uh, from the Euro, from Europe called Jesus.net. So they are hosting our uh, digital uh, our site. So we just changed the name or the that segment to discipleship.space. And then from there we can create courses through the Jesus.net uh, discipleship platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, say a little bit more about what does the platform allow you to do? Because okay, it so, might be new to our friends here, yeah. Okay, so the platform allows us to create content and go through lessons, um, which you can, uh, as course creators, they need to sign up, uh, and then they get to be assigned in. A, they can be assigned in a group. They can be assigned uh, with a partner, or they can go on their own with the lessons. For for digital missions launchpad. What we did is we grouped them together as a class and then they will start at the same time. So mm -hmm. there they can answer some questions. Most of the questions are required. So they can uh, they need to fill in the answers before they can proceed to the next uh, segment. And then everything is just like a copy. Uh, when you create the course, it's just copy and paste or uh, just place the URL of the videos that uh, you want to to share. It's good. It's a learning management system, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, I I I do see quite a bit of questions coming in. I'm because as I'm chatting with Ace, I may not be able to track with all. I've asked Melissa to help me narrow down. If you put it in the Q and A, it's easier for us to track uh, because the chat will just keep going up. So uh, that we appreciate that. But I, I think I have a question um, about your persona. Did you, okay. did you create a persona as you thought about who are the folks that will benefit from a, uh, you know, a course like this, a co cohort, right? So yes. can you talk to us more about that? So the persona that were, the initial persona that we, we, were, we thought of are those who want to uh, be equipped in digital strategies as they do summer missions. That's the initial thing that we thought <laughs> okay. of. But then as we're creating the course, we said that, wait, this is not just for, uh, the topics that we put here are not just for those wanting to join the summer mission trip. Even a pastor who wants to learn how to do what digital missions is all about can learn from this. So we changed our persona even before launching and even before promoting the course to a Christian who wants to learn a uh, digital strategies to be more effective in reaching people in the digital space where he is. I Most see. of our enrollees are actually between uh, mid-20s to mid-30s. Mm -hmm. So is there, was there like a sweet spot, you think, as you are progressing, you're in your third cohort now, is there a particular group that resonates the most with your material? Yes, um, most are church leaders who are in media, in tech, and uh, discipleship group leaders. Okay. Is that is that something that surprised you or like you you wish it was a different group of folks <laughs> well we that that's a good place to start actually okay. because we recognize that these discipleship group leaders are also doing like uh online discipleship with some of their mm -hmm. members so they it expands their vision that, oh i can still uh reach out to other areas or from where I came from through through this means not just for Zoom for our online Bible study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of questions that are just more practical. I think people are wondering, you know, 
this is sounds like a cool idea. I want to I want to look into the cost content. Can I duplicate okay. it? You know, can I just copy it and change the language? Maybe can you set everybody at ease and say yes or no? <laughs> no. First, yes, but you do the language translation. <laughs> uh, a disclaimer, except for digital theology, which came from our partner, a pastor, everything comes from uh, uh, from crew. Yeah. Everything that we learned, uh, if 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 you will see, and Frank can attest to this. <laughs> yeah. Some of the videos there are from Cheryl, from our uh, what do you call that the digital, digital academy, maturity, right? digital academy, and digital some of academy, those. Yes. yes. Yeah. So basically, the second and third part are all from crew. Yeah. Uh, only the first part uh, came from uh, yeah. from our partner. Yep. The the you guys truly believe in copyright which means is the <laughs> right to copy right <laughs> yeah we're all but, crew but here seriously speaking I, I don't mean that in a in a bad way but i, I think <laughs> some uh our folks here in in, uh, in crew philippines they just have a way of like hey they learn something can we adapt this can we put it in a in a space that you know leads people on a journey so i, I had a chance to join them for one of the sessions uh in the most recent ones and you know it it really there were people that were eager like to them to them this is like jam like a jam uh because it's also put together in a in an accessible way and then they have mentors that journey with them answer their questions or listen to them as they process yeah can you say a little bit more about this uh the cohort part right because it's not a self-learning Course, yes, yes. Right. So uh, why did you decide to do as a cohort? What have you learned about that? The pros and cons. Yeah. Yes. Um, for that, we had an inspiration when we were invited to join One Hope's innovation class. So every week uh, they have we have lesson. Uh, the lessons that we go through online are asynchronous. We do it on our own pace, but every Every week, once a week, we gather and we discuss together. So in a way, we copied that format of gathering together every week, uh, particularly on a Thursday night in the Philippines, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. There we get to ask them questions or even they get to ask us questions like what, did, what, make, what made sense? What didn't make sense? What is something that you want to share to the big group that you are learning or God has been telling you? So, and then before the night ends, we uh, send them to breakout rooms to randomly for about uh, about three three people per breakout room, three to four people, and then they can freely discuss among themselves or even get to know other people and share what have been what are they learning and what they plan to do and even use it as a time for networking to hey i wanted to know more about what you're doing as well in your in your church or in your organization so we provide a space for them to learn from each other also yeah i like the idea of having each other you know they they have just a lot of opportunities it's not they're just learning from the facilitator or the teacher but they they have lots to challenge one another as well mm -hmm. yeah i think we have some questions about scalability and okay. capacity to okay. run it uh, i think you know it'd be good for folks to understand like what will it take to pull this off you know how many people were behind it uh, you know so what tell us a little bit more about that okay so when we crafted the course our team of six are hands-on in creating editing providing graphics uh we did it in a sprint of three days wow but okay. the context is we already have a uh, lessons from a previous training course in a seminary so mm -hmm. so we already had the foundation for that yeah uh that's the big part that's where if you're gonna do uh start from scratch thinking about the best topics for your audience i think that's the uh the Ma uh, manpower intensive part in terms of promotions we used uh, existing facebook pages that we have um and then we still we also did some ads 
so every so for the first run, that's the more uh, manpower intensive because we're still figuring things out. For the second run, it became easier. Um, it can be managed by like five people. <laughs> Just <then> drop one. <laughs> the, oh yeah, we <laughs> for the third run. This is the interesting. It's just managed by two people. Okay, yeah. <laughs> because you because get the you have volunteers, it, yeah. right? And your yes. volunteers that stepped in. And, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And because you got the hang of it, you know. Okay, this are, this this will be this week. We'll need more manpower. Mm-hmm. Else, we just need two people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about using Facebook. Like uh, anything else, you used to, what what proved to be effective or not so effective. What did you learn from that? Uh, in promotions, in the context of promotions, um, we we did something different. Like, uh, wait, let me wait, let me pull something up. Uh huh. We made a letter to the people that we want to invite. We call we have a series of posts called Dear Christian Leader, Dear Talented Technologist, and Dear Digital Citizen. Mm. So these are some of the letters that uh, as part of our promotion, like we're addressing uh, these kinds of people. And then at the end, come join Digital Missions Launchpad. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Just yes. Kind of, yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, give us a little bit of insight. I think people are curious about, because we can't look at the course now, but I know you did the th- digital theology part, mm-hmm. but what are some of the strategies or tools that you, you cover in the course? Um, for digital theology, uh, the basic thing is that um, the perspective that Technology is given by God. Mm -hmm. Uh, In the midst of emerging technology, we should not be afraid to look into it and think of ways how to use it. That's the gist of it. Okay. Uh, Then for the the strategies and the tools and platforms. Uh, For digital missions, we have case studies from Philippines. I think Singapore has one there and Malaysia. Uh, how okay. these three different countries did uh, digital missions and what are the results. Um, we also to- taught their digital outreach, how to share your faith online, mm-hmm. or known and moving, the pathway, the persona, and the different platforms available for you to reach your audience. Mm-hmm. So basically, that's it. Wow. That's great. That's great. I know you talked about one or two uh, stories about what people did. There's a question about, you know, what were some of the missions, uh, digital missions initiatives that might have been launched that you may be aware of as an outcome of the course? Yes. Um, some of them really did join the, <laughs> the summer missions and uh, brought the, the digital perspective. Um, one who participated in Launchpad, started to go back. Uh, he's a crew staff. He wanted to look into what can, how can he help the, the country. Uh, it's, a, it's a country in Southeast Asia. And then mm. they, from there, they launched their own podcast uh, you, with the senior staff. The, the parents, the grandparents, they launched a podcast. So they ask help from us in terms of trading how to do the podcast. So mm-hmm. those are some stories that mm-hmm. uh, we know. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I'll just take a quick break from the questions that have been typed. I just want to, you know, dig in this part because I know when you first started, you said you were trying to incorporate uh, what your team wants to accomplish. So I, I would love for some of our digital strategies here and leaders to hear a little bit of the top process of why this, how does this contribute to the mission, missional objectives that you have uh, in Crew Philippines DS? Okay, for, for our team, our, our main focus is to activate or raise up digital missionaries 
that will help fill 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 missional gaps. So when when we plan or we want to execute, these are we go back to our our main reason. Are we able to raise up digital missionaries in what we are doing, and can this help fill missional gaps? Uh, so when the opportunity for for training others uh, arose or opened up, we uh, it's a it's an easy yes for us, knowing that we through through what we're doing, it contributes to them becoming uh, digital missionaries. Yeah. So I hear, you. yeah, I think this is a key piece that is worth noting, you know, I mean, uh, within the GDS network, as some of you are familiar, I know some of you are champions, or you are partners, or but some some on this call, you are actually, actually doing the work, your position leaders, or part of a team that is activating uh, people to be on mission. Right? So and one of uh, the wildly important work we talk about is you know, mobilizing, multiplying disciples in this digital world. Uh, and that's what ACE is talking about. And then it's combining with that missional gaps. I think the way they have uh, looked at that is also, you know, the missional gaps that exist in the spaces that God is calling or placing upon uh, the participants, right? Uh, are there things that you, you sort of nudge them towards, ACE? i um, curious, like, like if they don't know, like say, I want to be a digital missionary, but I'm not sure, like where would you nudge them in what direction? Yes. Um, there's this story that uh, a, a media conference, uh, church media conference invited us to have, a, to have a booth and to promote our ministry. So when we went there, we just uh, brought one product digital missions launchpad so and uh, they placed us in a very strategic place right after the registration so all people will go through us and we were just shouting if you want to become a digital missionary sign up here and then from there uh, church leaders church members were asking what is a digital missionary can i be a digital missionary and we just say yes enroll mm. And you'll know the basics. So we also show them like uh, what they will expect. So and what a digital missionary is. So um, just putting it out there uh, can create a buzz. Uh, at the same time, can help uh, bring in traffic. At the same time, mm -hmm. also filter your audience. We also saw some of the, some people walk away, you know, uh, saying that this is not for me, and we just bless them. <laughs> That's okay too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. All right, uh, we're coming up to the uh, last 10 minutes or so. I would love to hear if some of you, as you've heard these things that are being you know, shared so far, and I know we've answered uh, quite a number of questions. Uh, Mel Micah, by the way, is a teammate of uh, yes. Ace, and he's <laughs> so kind to help type in the answers. Yes, thank you, Mel. Of, so appreciate you, Mel. Um, Maybe some of you want to unmute your mic and just share very briefly uh, one thought, you know, or one comment and an idea maybe, you know, so you can share an idea towards what ACE is doing. Or as you say, hey, you know, this made me think about what I might want to do and pursue, you know. And so this is kind of a, a practicing reciprocity, right? We have been receiving a lot. But there is something that I believe within this global learning community, we can also contribute. So feel free to unmute the mic, but I, my only request is you just keep your comments short. Uh, if you're kind of shy, you can also type it in the chat. But why don't you just unmute, uh, show us your face too, and then just share a brief idea. You're welcome to do so. Yeah. Anybody? Even if you just want to say a quick word of encouragement um, to Ace, you can. Maybe I'll put uh, Frank on the spot. Uh, you attended the uh, the mm -hmm. most recent one, and I know I didn't prep you for this, but uh, what what did you experience, and what did you do about it? it I will say, can you hear me? Is it coming? Yes, through? go for um, it. 
It, it really was excellent. I think on, I didn't do the number one, number two, but on number three, so many things went so smoothly. Um, there was a broad range of topics. It wasn't just like, okay, we're going to focus on this social media or this podcast. Like it really presented a lot of topics. The discussion times were excellent. They were open. People were sharing um, really, really well done. So I just, I was very, very blessed. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. We didn't pay you to say it, right? <laughs> no. no, I know, but it, it was excellent. It really was. Yeah. Thank you. Can I ask you a quick question? Stefan, go for it, Stefan. Yeah. So I'm completely new to DS. <laughs> and so I'm, as I'm listening, I am trying to uh, figure out the, the context. So, so is the. The, the purpose of this is for us to know that there is a course that ACE and others have uh, developed and that that can help us uh, in our understanding of the S and then applying it to our personal ministry here in, in, our, own, in our own countries, right? Um, I think sort of. I mean, yes, you, you're welcome to join them and they do have their cohorts in March and September. We're not necessarily putting this for to advertise for Digital Missions Launchpad, uh, but rather as a learning opportunity of a, a digital strategist in this part of the world, trying to answer the call uh, and then trying to press towards their mission, uh, one part of their mission of mobilizing digital missionaries. So this is how Ace and his team did it. Uh, it might look different in Montenegro. It might look different in, you know, Australia or some other parts of the world. So this is hopefully will give you some inspiration and something to think about. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Can I ask a question? This is Sway. Um, I think I saw something in the comments about plugging. Um, from a podcast into a Facebook community for further engagement. Is there a place like once you take the course, that's a place of sharing best practices, a community where others that are new to this don't feel alone, like they can share what, what they were learning, what they're not. Is there a part of that where they can continue after they take the course? Uh, thank you for that question. That will be our next improvement for fourth run. We recognize that uh, some of our, those especially who finished, uh, though very few, are wanting to have a community. So that will be implemented on a September run, probably on Discord. We're still figuring things out the best way to build that community, and Discord is on top of our list. Wonderful. Ace, if you don't mind, can you pull up that slide one more time about your, your next kind of iteration? So in my discussion with Ace, I think I, I had wanted to find out from him you know, what are they planning to do next, right? And would you believe that they, they don't just plan the, the cohort just as in the program itself, but they have thought in advance of like, where else might be different arenas where people are interested. And some of these, like the podcast and missions, a ministry of design, they already have run some of the causes with some initial feedback. So what's really cool is that, that these are like little, you know, uh, small pathways that people are taking uh, yeah. as, as a next step. Um, one thing that you may also have noticed, and um, if you go back to the original slide, you see that they, they have several different brands that they are supporting or energizing this digital missions launch pad. And some of you noted that, you know, in fact, in the, the promotions, there was indigenous on the top left corner, right? Maybe Ace, can you talk, talk a little bit more about how did you brand this and how do you position it and how did it help you and serve you in the large, broader body of Christ? Okay, for the first two runs, we branded it in partnership with, or we branded it under Indigitus. Uh, because we wanted to have a larger reach. Uh, in the, for context, in the Philippines, uh, crew is uh, running in Digitus. Uh, and uh, both 
the leaders of crew digital strategies and indigitos are mostly the same. So we don't have a problem with that in the Philippines. Uh, for the third run, uh, what Simon is sharing is that uh, they are co-branded uh, uh, logos because we wanted to also honor our partners who our who is faithfully joining us in this mission. Wait, let me just pull up that slide for you to see. All right. So since we also recognize that some of them, some of our partners are involved in Indigitus, like uh, our Pastor JP, the one who did digital theology, is connected with us through Indigitus, and he also brings the Indigitus brand. Uh, so we're all staff of crew, and then uh, the other ministry there is uh, Converge. They were they were the ones sponsoring the Social Media 101, and of course. Uh, what better way to honor our uh, our platform partner? So by also putting their their logo there uh, with discipleship.space and Jesus.net. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Appreciate you for unpacking that because I think that's always something people are considering. Like where might this? How do you position this so that it has uh, the the correct reach that you want? Um, and so unpacking that is helpful for us to learn yeah, and discover. Yeah. And okay, any final comments from our friends? We're so glad you, uh, a few of you who, who spoke up. Um, anyone else that want to? Yes, yeah, go for it. I don't know Simon, who's speaking. Yeah. This is Josh. Um, Josh from Uganda. Go for it, Josh. Sorry, I'm on the road. But uh, my question is, does this work best for students? To run through this journey of connecting them, then take them through the process, and then putting them in a community, or does it also work with uh, marketplace leaders or professionals? Because it's not very easy for people to give this much attention and they keep in the community for long. So, is it best practice on a university campus, or it also worked out with the professionals outside? Thank you. Mm. Ace, did you catch that? not all i think the the question if i got it is that is it uh, for students or is it for working okay. professionals yeah um our target market is actually for church leaders so most of them are already graduates but we have a few students who enrolled like uh there's one a college a few college students who enrolled and it benefited them in terms of uh, having a perspective and bringing them bringing what they learned into their youth ministry in church yeah i think if you once you look at the the content and uh, we'll try to make it available to you if you uh, want to reach out to Ace. Um, I don't know, Ace, you, if you're comfortable to give your email so folks can reach out or you can give it give to Mel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we will we'll want to post it. Likely we'll post it on our workplace so that you can access and then see like a, an overview of what they cover. But when you see what they cover, you realize that actually is is quite broad so it doesn't matter whether you're a student or working place or in the ministry you can benefit from it right yes. and yeah. if i yeah. might add something we made it really broad so that um from different ministries different age can really contextualize it uh in it to suit their to suit their ministry needs yeah wonderful yeah all right, I think we have come to almost the end. I I just want to once again uh, extend, uh, say thank you to Ace. Uh, you are such a wonderful, you know, example of somebody that is just trying. You're not saying I have all the answers, right? So as as I've explained to you right from the beginning, we're we're learning. We're, this is life learning, right? We're not coming to a guru and say tell us everything we need to do, but we're we're seeing a fellow brother, you know, a fellow sojourner exploring digital missions and digital strategies, and he's unpacking a little bit of that uh, for us. So as we kind of wrap this up, I, 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 you guys are the privileged ones. You are first, first time ever on a learning lounge uh, with us at GDS. 
Uh, Melissa and I and the, and the team would love to put these on for you uh, once, at least once a month. But we love for you to share what you learn, right? So the, the two fantastic places for you to do it is on our workplace, which I think most of you found, about, found out about the event here. So if you come across something interesting that spurs us on as leaders towards thinking about digital strategy, and it can be any arena, it can be about audience, it can be about the, the actual tools and platforms, maybe something about generative AI, whatever. You are more than welcome to post something that directs us to, to wrestle with it as leaders. Or tell us a little bit about what's going on in your part of the world, right? Some cool stuff you're experimenting with. It doesn't have to be polished, right? We, we're learning together, right? And the other place that you can consider sharing is on our GDS uh, WhatsApp chat. Uh, if you are not on it and wish to be on it, you can feel free to put your, your name and your mobile in the chat and we'll make sure to add you on that. Uh, for some of you, that's a better platform to interact and share ideas. So we'll come to the end of our time together. We will make the recording available. Thank you so much, friends, for being with us. Uh, we will have something in June by faith. <laughs> and we just stay peeled to the, to, to the GDS network. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, Ace. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this. God bless you.